Hello all, and welcome to this Thursday evening beer review. I've got a new haircut, and I've got an interesting beer. Somewhat of an expensive beer, but an interesting beer. And why am I spending money on expensive beers when, you know, I constantly complain about how my budget's getting tighter and tighter? Well, because, um, yeah. So they blew up a pipeline over and off the coast of Germany, and yeah, we're just taking those little baby steps towards global thermonuclear war. So why not spend money on beer? It'll help me get my mind off of things, you know? <laughs> uh, and yet it is still less, less disturbing to dwell on than work. I hate thinking about work. <laughs> so what are we reviewing tonight? Well, a very special beer indeed. It's the first time I've seen this here in Hawaii. Dogfish Head, 120 minute IPA. The Imperial India Pale Ale, age well. So this is about 15 to 20 percent ABV according to the brewer. It um, shifts by, you know, batch uh, they brew, I suppose. And um, the date is a little bit odd to me. I mean, it's a normal date, but it seems to be a one that's so it's for 2023. I'm not exactly sure why they would make a date for 2023, since this is supposed to be an aged beer rather than a beer that gets stale. Um, either way, I believe it's fairly fresh because I haven't seen this on the shelf at all until like the past few weeks. So let's read the label now, shall we? What you have here is the Holy Grail for hop heads. This beer is continually hopped for over a 120 minute boil and then dry hopped for over a month. Enjoy now or age for a decade or so. So yeah, this is definitely one I might consider doing a vertical if there's still anything around in 10 years, but you know, who knows? But anyways, I'm expecting this to be very hoppy. Um, IBUs is around 120 IBUs, so really up there. <laughs> Alcohol really up there. I'm pretty sure the gravity is really up there. Um, let me go and see if I have the Play-Doh up here. Yeah, it doesn't have um, the Play-Doh. Oh, 45 degree Play-Doh. So, yeah, this ought to pour like syrup, really. So, without much further ado, let's just get straight to this. Ooh. Pouring it into a tulip. Wow, this is more carbonation than I was expecting. Doesn't seem to be dry condition thing. I mean bottle condition, thankfully. So, I would say an orange amber to brown, orange amber to brown, with a thick, mm, off-white to beige head, that smells like I just stuck my hand into a handful of pops. Underneath that is, it goes beyond biscuity, man. This is like, this is like a trifle cake or something. That is how sweet and how dense the malting is. With just like hop frosting on top, I suppose. Almost like toffee notes, treacle notes. And when I say hops, it's not like, oh, this is piney, this is tropical. It, it smells like the actual hop flower. Hints of chocolate as well. Well, let's just get this onto the palate since the head's quickly dissipating. Not surprising on a beer this thick. Ooh. 
Oh boy, that's a slap upside the head of bitter with bitterness. And oddly enough, not very bitter on the finish. Kind of on the boozy side, but wouldn't it be? <laughs> I've had boozier things, though, with much lower ABV, so I'm going to let that pass. There's even a carbonation bite. <clears throat> By the way, I'm drinking this on an empty stomach, so expect me to get a little bit plastered by this. <laughs> okay, tastes are kind of taste is a little bit hard to suss out with this one. It's just so thick and dense and clumped together, all the various taste notes, that, um, you know, other than the hopping, it's really hard to kind of suss out. <clears throat> so first, very thick, very oily. I would definitely put this in the top three oiliest and thickest beers I've ever had. I think a couple of Imperial Stouts are up there too. This is just, you know, this is thicker than drinking fruit juice. Let's put it that way, you know, like, like grapefruit juice or something like that. It is really thick, almost syrupy. There is intense hot bitterness up front of a certain, I would say it's definitely leaning towards the grapefruit citrusy side, but it's just more bitter. And I can start, already start feeling, this is one of those ones that's triggering like that allergic reaction to me. I'm starting to get stuffed up a little bit. Very toffee-like notes, treacle-like notes in the body. I mean, in the malt. Oddly enough, um, the bitterness, you know, in the long finish, it doesn't really, it's there, but it's not as strong as I've had in other beers. And I'm wondering if the thickness of the body has anything to do with that. The top note is very similar to the nose. Maybe a bit more of that candy, candy, treacly note there. And I know I'm talking more about the malting than I am about the hopping, but the hopping is basically just an intense bitterness that sort of offsets the heaviness of the body and the residual sugars. So there is sweetness from that very thick syrupy body, but it is very much offset by that hot bitterness. And that hot bitterness is so intense that it really doesn't leave much room in the way of, you know, um, discernible hop notes other than hot bitterness. Like I said, maybe a touch of grapefruit, touch of citrus zest there.
despite that, you know, um, this is a beer pushed all the way to the edge. This is a beer pushed all the way to the edge of basically what you can do with beer in regards to how much hops and how much malts you can stuff into it, how long you can boil it, you know, it's sat on hops, you know, aging for a month. And the end result is balanced, you know. The hops to malts is balanced. You know, one side isn't overwhelming the other side. And I think that intensity of both both the malt and the hopping kind of um, covers up what would otherwise be a very boozy beer otherwise. I said otherwise twice. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh, boy, man. I'm getting plugged up almost all the way to the sinuses. But I'm still getting some airflow. Once I can't get any more airflow, I'm going to cut the review off. There's other taste notes here that I feel like I'm missing. Like, there's an aspect of stewed fruits in there as well. You know, like possibly stewed apricots or nectar or nectarines or something like that. Stewed stone fruits, but I don't, you know, like I would say apricot, plums, nectarines, not so much cherries, you know. Um, it has a very dense edge to it. Cherries I, I, I consider a little bit brighter. As it warms up, it's not getting significantly hotter or, you know, cloying. Kind of remains as it is. Just, um, I would say that it's broadening a little bit. If you get what I mean, I, uh, it's very difficult to explain. It's almost like when the beer is cold, it's tight. It's the, the taste and scents are closed up but as it warms it broadens and with many beers it doesn't broaden evenly leading to a lack of balance this one is broadening equally this is also very filling i was kind of hungry no i am not hungry anymore i'm still going to eat dinner though obviously Probably just, just a soup and some rye bread, though. So they just call this an Imperial IPA, you know, instead of a double IPA. I would definitely say this qualifies as a triple IPA. This is much thicker much more intense than beers labeled a double IPA. Um, this is probably the most out there IPA that I've ever reviewed, but at the same time it is also one of the most balanced of this particular style that I've ever reviewed. And I'm starting to get a little bit too stuffy right now. So I'm going to sort of wrap it up. And I think it's kind of a shame that I'm developing an allergy to severely hopped beers, even though that's basically not what I go for, you know, anymore with beers. Personally, when I drink for pleasure, I drink very sessionable beers. Uh, this is not a sessionable beer at all, unless you are a hardcore alcoholic, which um, I am not. This will be my only beer for tonight, obviously. Oh, oh. Yeah, so let me just wrap this up here really quickly.
because I'm starting to get a runny nose. Um, yeah. If you want to really just see what the IPA style is pushed to its absolute limit, yet still, you know, balanced and drinkable, this is it. I think, like, Pliny the Younger and this are the only ones that really pull this particular triple IPA style off. Um, I've never had Pliny, but I've heard it's much like this. Um, would I pursue this again? For only one reason. Only one reason only would I drink this again. Um, obviously, because I don't like getting stuffy. But I would like... I would, I would think a vertical of this with a 10-year-old one and a freshly brewed one would be fairly interesting to go and do a vertical of. And, um, yeah. Um, if you have an allergy to... I'm wondering if it's the dry hopping that is causing this. Runny nose effect. As you've noticed, I don't have this problem with any beers other than IPAs. Um, and I'm wondering if it's if it's just um, I'm allergic to dry hopping, you know. Because um, all beers have hops, but I don't have it. I don't have a runny nose with every beer. Um, but yeah. Where was I? Yeah. If you really want to experience what a super intense IPA is all about and just a moment this is definitely it if you're allergic to hops you know um, you might want to avoid it <laughs> you guys wonder why I, I am so down on IPAs let's just say when you have a bad reaction to like I'd say about a third to half of them that you drink, you know, it kind of puts you off of the style. Um, but yeah, within the style, putting aside my own personal issues with the style, both from the biological end, which is has nothing to do with beers, and from the um, brewing biodiversity end, which has everything to do with brewing. Um... This one is definitely a must-try. This one is definitely a must-try. It is very expensive in Hawaii. This bottle cost me almost $10. The things I do to go and review, you know, beers for you guys. <laughs> that something like this, which, um, you know, I don't particularly enjoy for a variety of reasons, but think it's very important to review, you know. Um, yeah, if IPAs are your thing, give this one a shot. I think it's one of those ones that you have to try. Um, and it's a lot easier to get than Pliny the, El Pliny the Younger. And that, folks, is your beer review for this evening. I am going to go and end this video and just honk my nose really loudly, which I try to avoid doing on video. Um, and yeah. Cheers.